If you're a parent or a teacher or you have a child that you're trying to help get into medical or dental school, in this video I'm going to give you the three minute headline summary of all the stuff that you need to know to help support them with their application and at the end I'm going to give you some resources that you can use to help them separate themselves and set themselves apart from the rest of the applicants with these incredibly competitive courses. So with the medicine and dentistry applications there are five hurdles that a student needs to perform well in to stand a chance of getting into a medical or dental school. So the first is what I would broadly call CV building. Now they have to meet the academics so that means having the grades that are required but within that it's mostly things like work experience. Work experience comprises really three things which is shadowing, going into a hospital or a dental practice and being a fly on the wall and observing what happens, also volunteering and as well paid work is a really good thing to show responsibility and to have that thing that you're doing regularly and you're expected to turn up for. So work experience is a big part of that CV building that we talk about, but that also comprises things like what we call th further reading, so that's attending talks, uh, reading medical journals or maybe magazines like New Scientist or the health news just to stay up to date with what's going on. And also within that we can lump extracurricular activities which shows traits of a good doctor or dentist, it shows commitment to something, there are explicit skills that they will learn in the individual things, whether it's teamwork working in a football or netball team or whatever that is. It could be dedication to a skill, maybe if they're doing an instrument, or it could be understanding how to think differently if they're learning a language. Various ways that you can build that. Now the second thing is a really important exam called the UCAT, the University Clinical Aptitude Test. The reason the UCAT is challenging is because it is testing skills rather than knowledge, which makes it a quite unique exam. It'll ask people to read a passage and test their comprehension under time pressure. It'll ask them to do maths questions under time pressure or do a situational judgment test and test their ethics. So it's very unique and unlike other things that they've sat before, which is why it does need a little bit of preparation and can cause a little bit of stress to students if they've not really taken the time to prepare and given it the allocation that it needs. Now at the time of recording this is the only test that undergraduates have to take. If you're the parent of a graduate student, i.e. they have a degree or they are undertaking a degree that they will have finished by the time they start medical school, they may want to also do a second exam called the GAMSAT which opens the door to a few more graduate entry four year shortened programs if they wanted to go down that route. The third hurdle is the personal statement. Now this is where they write about themselves and have to answer a few questions, why they want to study medicine slash dentistry, what makes them qualified or what experience they've gained in that field and what traits they possess that make them a good doctor or dentist. This is where what we talked about with the experience building culminates in them describing why they're a great candidate, the traits they've developed, the experience they've gained that will make them a good doctor or dentist. The fourth hurdle, which is probably the most underrated, is tactical selection. Now, of course, everybody wants to go to the best medical schools, but realistically, for some people, that is not an option if they don't have the grades or they maybe don't have the UCAT score. So a lot of the time, it's about having an aspirational choice that they really want to go to, but at the same time, being realistic about where their given circumstances and their strengths, their weaknesses, they are the most likely to get into. Now, the first four hurdles are things that people have to prepare and execute and submit submit by September and October where they submit their application to the medical schools via a portal called UCAS which is the Universities and Colleges Admission Service. Now once that has been done the universities will decide whether they have met the initial eligibility criteria and whether they want to invite them to interview to then decide whether they want to offer them a place. So the fifth and final hurdle will not surprise you that it's interviews. Now there are two types of interviews and most now do what they call MMI. Now MMIs, as it suggests, is a series or a circuit of mini interviews. So it will be around eight interviews that are around five to eight minutes. So they will just go around, some will be a rest station, but essentially just doing different interviews with different scenarios over and over again until they've completed those eight or so stations. The other type of what we call panel interviews, which are becoming exceedingly rare, but these are the old fashioned ones that we used to have where the student would go in by themselves and they would have a panel of three, maybe four people who are just asking them questions together. They'll sit down for about 20 to 30 minutes, have a chat and get grilled on all the common questions that come up in medical or dental school interviews. Now let me give you a rough timeline for when all of this happens and how to 
help your child prepare. So what I like to do is take a two year time horizon for this. So if you look at the application timeline that is on screen now, and I'll show you where you can get a copy of this later in the video, you will see that if you start medical school in September, the year before, exactly the September and October, the year before starting, they will be submitting their application to UCAS. And I would recommend that they start an entire year before that, making it a two year process from starting their preparation to actually starting at medical or dental school. So we have to bear in mind that the students will probably be doing school exams or university exams while all of this is going on. So we have to be strategic to preserve that time to do well and meet the academic requirements while doing all the prep to build a really strong application. So I recommend starting, like I say, a September, the September before they will submit their application. And during that time, it's all about CV building. So spending about six months getting the work experience, building the extracurricular activities and skills and traits, and just gaining exposure to the industry that they want to go into. And that wealth of experience will really come through through at the end of the journey when they get interviewed because it is something that accumulates and compounds and builds over time. Then in about January, they'll have probably mock exams. So we can take our foot off the gas a little bit, but the idea of starting the September prior is that a lot of this stuff is almost done or set on autopilot. So it is low brain effort while we're thinking about exams and other things so that, that can just carry on in the background while we're doing that. Then we get to about March, which is when people start thinking a bit more seriously about their application. And whilst preparing for the exams, they might want to start looking at some basic UCAT stuff. We don't want to overdo the UCAT because it's quite an intense exam and requires quite intense prep, but we can lay the foundations and do some basic stuff before we really crank up the intensity when it comes to the time of sitting it. As you can see, the UCAT is sat over a 10 week period. So start to mid July all the way up to the end of September and the student can choose whenever they want to sit that during that period. They get one go at it and they only get one go per application cycle. So in that window, they can only have a go at it once. So of course the student will have their summer exams during that time. They'll be sitting that UCAT. They'll maybe be doing some more work experience. And this is where they want to accumulate all of that experience and put it in their personal statement. And we want to start our personal statement nice and early so that when we get to the deadline for submitting it in October, we don't want to be rushing it because it does take a lot of time and collaboration with other people to make sure we get it just right because there are several versions that are going to be written. Now at that stage when we're thinking of submitting our UCAS application is when we have all of our data. So we know our UCAS score, we know what our personal statement and our CV looks like, we know what kind of universities we're most likely to be suited to, we've probably got some predicted grades which gives us a good idea of which universities we're eligible for, we'll obviously have our GCSEs for most people who will kind of get, they'll have a flavor of whether say Oxford or Cambridge is on the cards or whether some universities are ruled out because we don't quite have the requirements for them. So that's when we're selecting our universities and being very smart about it. Then we submit our application between the start of September and mid-October. Then it's a bit of a waiting game to find out whether we get invited to interview, but that is when we should begin our prep. Never underestimate interviews. People think that it's a two week cramming and those are the people who get very humbled. And a lot of people you see who get four offers to interview, but don't get a single offer to join the medical school because they have underestimated all the other points that we talked about before. So interviews can happen anything from late November all the way up to the end of April. So students should be prepared to do that. So by May, they will get their offers and depending on how many offers they get, they will have to choose one firm, which is their first choice. And then an insurance is if they don't get the grades that are required, for that university and then they go to the second one which is their insurance as a backup. And it's around this time that if they're in year 13 by this stage, they will be sitting their A-levels and finishing those exams, hopefully getting the grades that they require to get in because offers are made conditional on people achieving certain grades. So then that'll be it with exams and assuming they get the grades and realize those offers, it will be a summer of relaxation and preparation for medical or dental school and then starting at the end of September. But, so that is it in a nutshell, but don't let the fact that I've oversimplified a very long and complex process fool you into thinking that it's easy. Each of those individual hurdles is incredibly complex and requires people to perform a very high level because medicine and dentistry are more competitive than they've ever been. And it's really important to stand out and excel in each of those to submit a really strong application and give yourself the best chance of getting in. So as I promised, you can get some free resources. If you click below, you can get that timeline and another resource specifically to help parents support their children with applying to medical or dental school. If 
if you would like us to help them with their application, we run a program that has incredible success with getting students into medical and dental school, which you can check out in this video. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and best of luck supporting your child with their application journey.